There has been a nuclear accident in the Soviet Union, and the Soviets have admitted that it happened. The Soviet version is this. Was given exclusive access to the plant for the first time since it came back into Ukrainian control. Have you ever had any relatives or friends experience with Chernobyl who were alive at the time it had happened, directly or indirectly through one source or another, or of hearing it? If so, what were their experiences? In the desolate ruins of Chernobyl's exclusion zone, untouched since the nuclear disaster, a plethora of mysterious anomalies beckon, from the peculiar colors of frogs to the ghostly remnants of abandoned vehicles, the area holds countless enigmas. Delve into Chernobyl's eerie realm, where reality blurs and the extraordinary awaits. A massive sarcophagus. The city of Chernobyl has a shelter. Did you know that? Don't think of this coffin as an ancient Egyptian tomb, though. It's used for something completely different. The building wasn't made to hold the dead. It was made to hold something much scarier, radiation. One of the hardest things to do after the Chernobyl accident was to contain the toxic materials that the broken reactor 4 had released. The huge task of building the coffin began, and it was called the Mammoth Beam. This building, which was built from May to November 1986, is one of the biggest things that people have ever made that can be moved. It was truly amazing how quickly it was built in dangerous conditions with rising radiation levels. In a very short amount of time, over 400,000 cubic meters of concrete and 7,300 tons of metal support were put in place. Even though it was put together quickly, this building has many detailed features, such as over 60 observation holes and ventilation shafts built right in. This was never meant to be a lasting solution, though. Over time, its breakdown made it more likely that nuclear material would leak out. By 1988, it was clear that the coffin would need to be fixed up within 20 to 30 years. As expected, the water that got in through the roof got dirty, which was a very serious problem. So, in 2016, the original tomb was taken apart so that it could be cleaned up completely and a new safe confinement structure could be put in place. The project kept going, even though it ran into many problems, such as budget issues and delays. With everyone working together, we were able to lower the threat of radioactivity over Chernobyl once more. Altered Genes in Dogs The strong babushkas weren't the only people who stayed in Chernobyl after the disaster. A lot of dogs also stayed in the area after the nuclear accident. These poor animals lingered in the empty scenery, not knowing how dangerous it was. When the Chernobyl nuclear plant exploded in 1986, the people who lived nearby were quickly removed, but they left their pets behind to be picked up so that the radiation wouldn't spread. Some of these loyal friends were able to get away, though, and found safety in Chernobyl with the help of caring cleanup workers. Even though it was very lonely, these wild dogs managed to stay alive and have since produced over 800 puppies inside the now-defunct nuclear plant. Their existence begs the question, how did they keep going through so much trouble? Scientists started to figure out what was going on by doing genetic studies that led them to an interesting discovery. There were genetic differences between these Chernobyl dogs that made them different from other dog groups. There are big changes in their genes that have made them look very different from what they were before. It's still not clear what caused this genetic difference. Whether it's radiation exposure, their amazing ability to survive in a toxic environment, or the effects of living alone for 37 years and breeding with each other. These mysterious dogs are mostly descended from German shepherds, and they are still changing quickly, keeping us guessing. People are told not to touch these creatures for their own safety and to avoid getting too much radiation. These German shepherds that were born in Chernobyl are still getting used to their new home, which shows how resilient and adaptable life can be in the face of hardship. Deformed Farm Animals Aside from dogs and wild animals, farm animals also died after the Chernobyl nuclear accident. During the years after the terrible event of 1986, there were a lot of deformed farm animals in the area. About 400 cases of misshapen animals were reported in 1990 alone. These animals had a wide range of problems, 
from heads that were not shaped right to having extra limbs. Radiation damage to DNA, the basic blueprint for how cells grow and mature, caused these deformities, which included changes in size and color. These DNA mistakes were bound to happen, showing up in different ways that affected different parts of physical growth. For example, mutations could cause limbs to grow in the wrong way, or other body parts to change shape. If the radiation affects reproductive cells and DNA, these changes could be passed on to children, causing birth defects. Unfortunately, these strange events didn't just hurt farm animals. The restricted zone has turned into an odd haven for animals dealing with the effects of radiation. Horses, wolves, and many types of birds have gotten used to living in areas with radioactivity, though they have lower birth rates and sometimes have mutated children. Even with all of these problems, some animal groups have done very well in the radiation. However, not all animals do well in this new setting. There have been drops in invertebrates like butterflies and bees, probably because they like to put their eggs in radioactive soil. Also, animals that live in pools in the zone, like frogs and fish, have to deal with genetic instability caused by radioactive nuclides in the sediment. Despite these problems, scientists are closely watching wildlife in the zone for new developments and changes. They are trying to figure out how the Chernobyl disaster is still affecting ecosystems and find ways to lessen its effects. Hundred of Gas Masks Some of the most well-known places in Pripyat are in middle school number three. You may have seen this place online without understanding how important it is. In the halls that have been left empty, there is a scary sight, rooms with gas masks all over the floor. Seeing this scene, especially when you think about the past of Chernobyl, makes you feel very sad. But these gas masks weren't made to be used during the nuclear accident in the first place. Instead, they were kept in the school during the Cold War to protect kids from the dangers of biological, chemical, and nuclear threats. The most disturbing thing about these masks is that most of them are kids' Izid, which serves as a stark reminder of all the young people who used to be in the school hallways. However, thieves have taken these artifacts out of storage because they are interested in the small amounts of silver that are hidden in the gas mask filters. The result is a scene straight out of a scary movie. The school, which used to be full of life and the sound of kids laughing, now stands as a quiet reminder of the terrible things that happened there. Black Bird of Chernobyl The legend of the Blackbird is a story about Chernobyl that not many people know. Do you know about the Mothman of Point Pleasant, West Virginia? If so, this story might connect with you. Several stories say that before the terrible events of April 26, 1986, workers at the Chernobyl plant saw a scary figure, a big black creature that looked like a person with scary red eyes and huge wings. Like the Mothman who showed up before the Silver Bridge fell, this scary thing seemed to know what would happen to the plant. Like its cousin, the Blackbird of Chernobyl became a sign of bad things to come. People who saw this evil being said they had scary dreams and strange phone calls after their meetings with it. Even while workers were cleaning up after the disaster, they said they saw the Blackbird floating over the ruins of the city, giving off a scary vibe. Like the Mothman, though, the Blackbird was nowhere to be found after the breakdown. People have tried to figure out why it exists, and one idea is that it might have been a black stork, a rare species that is native to southern Eurasia. Being close to three feet tall and having wings that spread out to almost six feet, it's easy to see how this bird could be mistaken for something scarier. Still, to this day, nothing solid has been proven about the blackbird's presence, leaving its story shrouded in mystery and guesswork. Radiation-eating black fungi after the tragedy at Chernobyl, most people thought that life in the area would slowly die out. Even though it was very unlikely, nature was able to grow well where the reactor used to be. In northern Ukraine's Chernobyl exclusion zone on February 24, 2022, Russian troops were doing cleanup work when they came across an amazing discovery, black fungi, a strange organism that has the amazing ability to grow in highly radioactive environments. 
This discovery has the ability to make huge steps forward in radiation safety, which is especially important for space exploration. Though research on these mushrooms is still in its early stages, signs of them were found as early as the 1990s. Researchers were first interested in these fungi because they have a lot of melanin, a pigment that gives skin and hair their color. Melanin is very important for these fungi to survive. In addition to being able to survive gamma radiation, these mushrooms have the amazing ability to turn it into chemical energy, which is similar to how plants do photosynthesis. Scientists all over the world are fascinated by this one-of-a-kind adaptation, which has led to new studies into the many ways that these fungi can be used outside of the Chernobyl exclusion zone. In 2016, SpaceX and NASA worked together on a groundbreaking project to send different types of these black mushrooms to the International Space Station. The goal was to see if they could protect humans from cosmic radiation. The study that was done on the ISS showed that a thin layer of this fungus could successfully block some of the incoming radiation. This is a positive step toward creating a living radiation shield for missions to explore deep space. The Babushkas of Chernobyl In Russia and Poland, the word babushka is used to call grandma or older women with love. In the setting of Chernobyl, the babushkas were exactly that, elderly women who refused to leave their homes even though the area was in a terrible ecological state. Even though the radiation levels were very high, about 100 of these strong women decided to go back to the zone because they had a strong connection to the land and the homes where generations of their families had lived. When officials at first tried to stop them from going back, the babushkas were determined not to give up. Eventually, the officials gave in and let them go back to their homes, though they knew they wouldn't last long in such dangerous conditions. Still, these strong women went against all chances and continued to do well even though radiation was a threat they couldn't see. In the early 2010s, many of these brave babushkas were interviewed. Most of them were already in their 70s and 80s. It's still a secret how they were able to stay alive while the radiation seemed to have no effect on them. They may have been affected, but they kept going through the hard times because they were determined to stay in their beloved country. They strongly thought that hunger, not radiation, is the real sign of death. Even though these women were already close to the end of their lives more than eight years ago, they show strength and defiance in the face of hardship. After they are gone, Chernobyl will no longer have people living there. However, until that inevitable day comes, the babushkas of Chernobyl will be remembered and praised for their incredible bravery and unwavering devotion to their home country. The Red Forest There's no doubt about how the Red Forest got its name. With its location in the middle of the Chernobyl exclusion zone, this forest went through a huge change after the terrible nuclear accident in 1986. The forest pine trees died from the toxic fallout because they were exposed to dangerous amounts of radiation. Their green leaves turned a strange ginger color. Scientists say that radiation had another strange effect on the forest environment besides turning the pine trees red. Decomposition happened more slowly in the red forest than in woodlands that weren't touched. Studies showed that plant matter, like leaf litter and tree roots, broke down much more slowly. This was because microbes and fungi that are needed to break down organic matter were not able to do their job. With its strange, red color and otherworldly look, the Red Forest has been the inspiration for many works of fiction, including games and books with post-apocalyptic themes. Scientists think the pine trees will keep their fiery color for many years to come. This will be a stark memory of how the Chernobyl disaster changed nature in a way that will last for a long time. Color-changing frogs Even though they are small, the eastern tree frogs and other frogs that live near Chernobyl have amazed scientists with how well they have adapted to the high radiation levels. These frogs normally had bright green colors, but after the terrible nuclear accident in 1986, they changed dramatically. In a truly amazing example of evolution, these frogs started to change their color to deal with the radiation around them. 
Around 2016, scientists noticed that the frogs in the area weren't just a little darker. Some of them had turned completely black, which was very different from their original bright green color. Like the radiation-eating fungus we talked about earlier, these frogs had more melanin, which is the pigment that gives our skin its color. In the case of these frogs, though, higher melanin levels didn't just make them darker, they also gave them a big protection against the harmful effects of radiation. Melanin is very good at absorbing and getting rid of radiation energy, which lowers the risk of cell damage. In essence, frogs with darker skin and more melanin were better able to survive in the radiation-filled environment around Chernobyl. It's interesting that these frogs' dark color doesn't match the current level of radiation in the area they live in, but rather the level of radiation in the past. Based on this, it seems that melanin gave frogs with darker skin a better chance of survival during the Chernobyl accident, even though they were originally in the minority. Since the accident more than 10 generations ago, natural selection has favored these darker frogs, making them the most common type in the area around Chernobyl. The Stalkers of Chernobyl Plenty of us have dream trips to places like Japan, New Zealand, and Australia, which are known for their well-known landmarks and sites. Still, there is a small group of us who really like things that are forgotten or hard to find. Dark tourists are people who are drawn to places that are linked to death, pain, and the macabre. Dark tourism includes visits to places that have a lot of bad memories from the past, like battles, disaster zones, and places where terrible crimes happened. Chernobyl, with its spooky memories of the nuclear disaster, is a great example. Even though radiation is still present, a group of adventurers called stalkers roam the area. They are drawn to it by a strange mix of risky exploration and cultural encounters. This behavior, known as stalkerism, often walks the line between what is legal and what is illegal. Some people may wonder why people want to go to places that could be dangerous, but everyone has their own reasons. Some people are just interested and curious, while others are morbidly fascinated or want to learn more about it. Would any of you be interested in going to Chernobyl if you had the chance? Without a doubt, I would think about it. There's a certain appeal to looking into the darker parts of history. Still, it's important to treat these places with care and awe, Dark tourists know how important it is to honor places with sad or important historical stories, and they know they need to be careful and keep a serious attitude while they explore. The Toxic Elephant's Foot The elephant's foot, whose name makes you think of a huge animal limb, is not what it seems to be. This mysterious mass is located in the basement below Chernobyl's reactor number 4. It is mostly made up of silicon dioxide, with small amounts of uranium, titanium, zirconium, magnesium, and graphite also present. Because this stuff is so thick and highly radioactive, armor-piercing bullets had to be used to take samples for testing. At first, the amounts of radiation near the elephant's foot were unbelievably high, giving people a fatal dose in just minutes. This melting mass of corium that formed during the nuclear accident does look a lot like an elephant's foot. The lava-like fuel that makes up this material, which weighs about 2.2 tons, is fascinating, even though it is dangerous. Five times in history that we know of, corium has naturally formed in rocks like the elephant's foot. The first time was at Three Mile Island in Pennsylvania in 1979. The second time was at Chernobyl in 1986, and the third time was at the Fukushima Daiichi plant disaster in Japan in 2011. There is no doubt that the elephant's foot is still a very dangerous substance. It will stay so for decades or even centuries to come. The danger is made worse by the fact that no one knows how corium will behave in the long run. Scientists are working hard to find ways to successfully reduce, quench, and cool corium, but the fact that it can change at any time makes their work very interesting. The new containment system built over Chernobyl is meant to keep its damaging effects in check, giving people hope that another corium-related accident won't happen. We should hope that the results of this study stay dormant so that we don't have to use what we've learned anytime soon. 
the abandoned carnival. It's hard to forget what happened on April 26, 1986, when the carnival in Pripyat was shut down. This park was supposed to open for May Day events just a few days after the terrible nuclear accident, but it ended up becoming a symbol of the disaster. The only things that are left of its glory today are the rusting Ferris wheel and the broken down bumper cars, which stand as silent witnesses to a past that will never be known. Pripyat was a shining example of modernization. It was a busy city that summed up the Soviet Union's atomic age futurism. With about 50,000 people living there, it was ready to enjoy the fun and thrills of the entertainment park. But fate stepped in with the Chernobyl accident, which released levels of radiation into the environment that had never been seen before and crushed the city's hopes. Communication lines were cut off during the chaos that followed, which was marked by uncertainty and slow action. People didn't want to say how bad the disaster really was. It is said that the entertainment park was opened for a short time on April 27th to take attention away from the disaster that was happening. If this is true, it would be the only time the park has been used. It looks like this entertainment park was always going to be closed down and forgotten, a somber reminder of how fragile human goals are when faced with nature's untamed power. Even though it was only there for a short time, it now stands as a sad reminder of what could have been and a quiet reminder of how the Chernobyl disaster changed the lives and hopes of the people who lived there. Atomic Vodka After the terrible accident in 1986, the Chernobyl exclusion zone was made, which included the area that was most badly affected. Scientists have grimly predicted that this area will stay dangerous for an amazing 24,000 years. A group of scientists led by Jim Smith, an environmental scientist at the University of Portsmouth, came up with a unique project in this area that seemed to be empty. Their ambitious goal was to make a market product from materials found near Chernobyl. Their dream came true in the form of atomic vodka, a brave new idea that came from the wreckage of the nuclear reactor. The team did most of their study on an experimental farm plot near the Oporichny settlement that was in a less polluted part of the exclusion zone. They grew rye here, which was radioactive in some ways. The team was able to get rid of the radioactive elements though by distilling the spirit. This left only natural carbon-14, which is something that can be found in any spirit. To make things even safer, mineral water from a deep aquifer in Chernobyl, which is about six miles south of the plant, was added to the atomic vodka. No matter where it came from, this water didn't seem to contain any radioactivity tied to Chernobyl. Still, people have questions about how safe it is, which is natural. The thought of eating something that might be nuclear is scary, and many people, including myself, might be hesitant to do so. But the creation of atomic booze could help Chernobyl's economy get back on its feet. By making a product from materials from the exclusion zone that can be used again, this project could bring new investment and attention to the area. Even though safety worries may still be there, the idea of using new technologies to boost Chernobyl's economy is one that should be thought about. Are you brave enough to try it? When someone goes through a tragedy, this question makes you think about the delicate balance between risk and chance. Hospital of Death From the creepy hallways of an empty middle school to the spooky depths of the Pripyat Hospital, also known as MC4D126, Chernobyl's haunted places are sure to give you the creeps. Built on Duby Naroda Street, this hospital was first meant to serve the people of Pripyat including the families of workers at the nearby nuclear power plant. On the terrible morning of April 26, 1986, people were already being taken to the hospital before the accident was officially reported. If the walls of this hospital could talk, they would definitely talk about the scary things they saw while people were rushing to get out of the building. There are still traces of the past inside, like dirty clothes left behind by patients who were flown to Moscow to get care for radiation injuries. After being left empty and forgotten, a lot of the hospital is now stuck in the past. 
Even though it's empty, it still draws a lot of dark tourists who are drawn to its creepy atmosphere and scary past. Unfortunately, many of the hospital's rooms have been vandalized, which adds to its creepy atmosphere. MC4D126 is a somber reminder of the terrible things that people in Pripyat had to go through after the nuclear accident. It is a stark memory of how terrible the Chernobyl disaster was for those who were affected by it. The hospital is a sad memory of the unimaginable tragedies that happened inside its walls just hours after the disaster. Tonight, shadows danced through its empty hallways. The Firefighters of Chernobyl On the terrible night of the Chernobyl accident, the brave firemen were the first ones to arrive at the scene. Someone from the Soviet Union named Vladimir Pritch and his hard-working group of 14 were among them. Preesh and his men quickly got to the scene of the crime and had to deal with the chaos that was happening around them. Their first job was made harder by the large amount of damage and the many fires that were going on in the area. As things got worse, they focused on the roof of the turbine hall because they thought its contents were the most dangerous right away. They had no idea that the real danger was not the fires, but the radiation that they couldn't see. Pritch and his friends quickly started to feel sick from being around very high amounts of radioactivity. They started to have fever, nausea, loss of awareness, and seizures, which are the early signs of acute radiation syndrome. Pritch and his men kept going with their goal until their bodies could no longer handle it, even though they were in great danger. After being exposed, Pritch was taken to the hospital, where he fought severe ARS symptoms. The fact that his situation got worse very quickly shows how badly radiation can hurt people. There were even rumors that Pritch had been exposed to so much radiation that it killed him. His eyes, which used to be dark brown, turned a scary blue color. Even so, Pritch's story is just one of many that happened after the accident. A lot of people who ran away from Chernobyl lived with the long-term effects of the radiation until the end of their lives. Their sacrifice as a group is a moving reminder of how deeply and permanently the Chernobyl disaster changed the lives of those it touched. Abandoned Cooling Tower The abandoned cooling towers are one of the most disturbing sights in Chernobyl. They stand as solemn reminders of a time long ago. To get to these huge buildings, you have to go through a barren landscape that is full of broken concrete and construction materials. As you move into the huge area around the towers, the mood starts to feel very strange and creepy. The acoustics inside the bigger tower make a disturbing echo that makes even the smallest sounds louder. Every step makes noise against the walls, making it feel even more alone and abandoned. Inside the cooling towers, Broken pieces of equipment and old building materials are spread out, speaking for themselves about the hidden stories of Chernobyl's past. These buildings, which used to be busy, are now empty and quiet, as if frozen in time. The cooling towers are still a draw for people interested in the evil side of tourism, even though they aren't being used. Stalkers, a type of dark tourist, and brave explorers go deep into Chernobyl to try to solve the riddles that are still there in the abandoned buildings. For them, the cooling towers are a powerful memory of the terrible events that changed the course of history forever. Dolls of Chernobyl Spread out among the haunting ruins of Chernobyl are the broken pieces of dolls. These fragile figures tell a story of loss and abandonment. These dolls were all over town, mostly broken and damaged. Many of them were found in the school. At first glance, these dolls might look like old things that were left behind when people left quickly after the Chernobyl accident. But they are now the subject of mystery and discussion, showing how much the tragedy has changed the lives of those who used to live in Pripyat. The explosion at the nuclear power plant broke the dream that Pripyat was the future of the Soviet Union. Residents were forced to leave quickly, but they were exposed to high amounts of radiation. Even with the first precautions, the average whole body dose to evacuates was predicted to be about 2 rem, which could raise their risk of getting cancer over their lifetime. In spite of what most people think, 
These toys were not left behind by children who were running away on the day of the disaster. Instead, most of them were put there by tourists who go into the exclusion zone. These dolls are fun for some people, but for others, they are a way to remember the people who lost their homes and childhoods in the crash. But this act has caused a lot of debate because it makes it hard to tell the difference between the real historical story of the disaster and the stories that visitors made up. As tourism in the area has grown, so has the number of people who touch these objects. This has made people worry about how to protect the site and show respect for its sad past. Silhouettes of Missing People In the empty streets of Chernobyl, where quiet is the norm and the remains of homes that people once lived in lie empty, dark tourists have left their mark on creepy works of art. People often call the art on city buildings shadow graffiti, and it shows what many people see as the shadows of missing people. People who walk through the eerie streets are drawn to these scary silhouettes, which are painted in stark black against a background of emptiness. Some of these works of art are hidden right in front of people, making them work harder to find them, like treasures buried in the ruins. Every figure in the picture, whether it's a child about to flip a light switch, a baby playing hide and seek, or a single person crying, tells a story frozen in time. It seems like these shadows are the only ones who live in this radioactive wasteland. Their presence makes the abandoned town feel very lonely. People who find these haunting works of art will be reminded of the terrible tragedies that happened in Chernobyl. They are a quiet tribute to the people whose lives were forever changed by the terrible events of that day. Graveyard of Vehicles Along with the empty homes and stray dogs, Chernobyl's barren landscape has a quiet memorial to the disaster's aftermath, countless vehicles slowly giving in to nature's relentless embrace. Deep inside the radioactive exclusion zone, there is a graveyard of cars that serve as a somber memory of what happened that terrible day. These vehicles were left behind by their owners after the accident. They tell a story of hasty retreat and abandonment in the face of danger that could not be seen. Not many people choose to leave a polluted place without thinking about it first. Radioactivity may not kill right away, but the long-term effects are very hard on people who are subjected to it. Even though the evacuation didn't start until 36 hours after the meltdown, it left a trail of buses, cars, planes, and trucks, which stood for lives that were suddenly cut short. The majority of these cars were found near the village of Rasoka, all of them are thought to be worth more than $48 million. But time has worn them down, and many of them have been taken apart and sold for scrap. Their once proud bodies are now just ruins of what they used to be. In Pripyat, there is another vehicle graveyard with protected cars and trucks with huge tanks that hold thousands of liters of decontamination solution. These vehicles were once used to clean the streets, buildings, and trees of radioactive dust in cities. Now they just sit there, doing nothing but giving in to nature's endless march. As plants grow over their rusting frames and animals hide in their hollow interiors, these vehicles stand as silent reminders of the lasting effects of Chernobyl, a stark warning of how powerful people are at both making things and destroying them. So. All we can do is watch and wait for nature to take back what was lost and return the cars from Chernobyl to the ground where they came from. Giant Catfish Marine life that is doing well might seem strange in the strange setting of Chernobyl, where nature's strength defies belief. Even so, catfish have not only lived, but also thrived in the cooling pond of Chernobyl, which was not expected. The well's catfish whose formal name is Silurus glanis, have made a home for themselves in this strange place. Even though the area is filled with high amounts of radiation from the nuclear accident, these animals have done a great job of adapting to their new home. Because they don't have any natural enemies and have a lot of food, the catfish in Chernobyl's cooling pond have grown to huge sizes. The biggest one, which was caught for scientific study, was almost six feet long, which is about the same height as a normal person. Their size may surprise you, but it's normal for their species to get that big. 
Wells catfish are known as one of the biggest freshwater fish in Ukraine and Europe. They can live up to 100 years, grow to be 16 feet long, and weigh over 200 pounds. Despite original fears that the polluted waters would become uninhabitable for aquatic life, these catfish have done very well, which has made experts think that there may be more surprises to be found in Chernobyl's ecosystem. In fact, their appearance makes us think about how strong life can be in the face of hardship and challenges our ideas about what can grow after a disaster. Now we'll talk about today's topic, which is a strange find in the Chernobyl forest that has interested both scientists and fans. Reports from the area talk about a strange animal that looks a lot like the Komodo dragon in Indonesia, but is smaller. Photographic proof gives us a tantalizing look, but other than this one picture, the creature is still a mystery. Even though people have tried to find it again, they have not been able to. This has cryptid enthusiasts and researchers interested in its possible survival. But amidst the tragedy, stories of resilience and scientific marvel emerge. Want to delve deeper into Chernobyl's haunting secrets? Subscribe for more chilling explorations of history's darkest chapters. And remember, even in the face of disaster, nature finds a way to endure.